Hello, and welcome, people of YouTube. My name is Elon Osborne, and I like to talk about movies, audio, and music. And today I'll be going over this beauty, the Fiera 8 external amplifier from Stark Sound. Iron Man. <laughs> no, not that Stark. The Fiera 4 was such a hit that Stark Sound decided, you know what? Let's double it, shall we? Right out the gate, let's start with... What's in the box? Like with most amps, the premise is simple. Amplify an audio signal. Boom. Done. So the contents of the box are just as simple. Power cable, literature, and the amp itself. Ta-da! Inside the unit is Stark's new proprietary SAPS power supply. SAPS meaning Shielded Switched Audio Power Supply. It is powered by NS60 Class D amp modules and comes in this stealth black finish with an aluminum faceplate on the front, power button, and a sleek LED indicator light that makes it seem like it should be in a sci-fi film. Red when it's off, green when it's on. Nice touch, if you ask me. On the top, we have this laser engraved Fiera lettering, just in case you ever forgot what it's called. On the back, we have a main power switch, trigger input and output if you need to daisy chain more than one amp in your system, eight sets of speaker binding posts, and eight sets of inputs featuring both RCA and XLR, which can be selected via these little toggle switches here. One thing to note is the design. It's interesting that they clustered the inputs and outputs this way instead of spreading them out all in a row like with my Outlaw Model 7000X, for example. But one thing you'll notice right away is that despite it being able to power eight channels, which is one more than its competitors, it is significantly lighter and has a slightly smaller footprint too. And yet, it still has a power rating of 130 watts per channel into eight ohms, 260 watts into four ohms, all channels driven from 20 hertz to 20,000 kilohertz with a signal to noise ratio of 110 decibels A weighted. How do they sound? Since this amp has both RCA and XLR inputs, I of course used XLR just to be sure that I'm using the quietest cable possible since RCA can sometimes introduce a little bit of hiss or hum or maybe even a slight buzzing. Although truth be told, that happens much less nowadays since digital coax cables with RCA connectors are much better than the days of yore, sometimes rated, but all with better shielding than your average analog RCA cable you used when hooking up your Nintendo 64 or PlayStation 1 back in the day. But nevertheless, I went with XLR because if I'm given the choice, I just prefer XLR. Now to further explain the testing procedure, I reduced my setup to a 7.0 configuration. That's right. Just to make sure that I was only hearing what the amp was amplifying, I took the subwoofers out of the equation altogether. I bypassed all crossovers so that full bandwidth signals were being sent to all my ear level speakers just to get more of a sense of how these amps handled lower frequencies especially. I ended up watching select scenes from A Quiet Place Part 1 and 2 because those are always good films to test the noise floor of your system since there are several parts with nothing but atmospheric sounds like wind air, room tone, etc. Because when you're presented with scenes like that, A Quiet Place Part 1 and 2 will truly test how loud or quiet your system is just sitting there on its own when things are almost dead silent. Maybe your Blu-ray player is a bit noisy when the disc is spinning. Maybe your Xbox fan is a little noisier than you'd like. Did you ever stop to think about how quiet your listening space is? That's part of home theater too. Along with A Quiet Place, I also watched the beginning of Blade Runner 2049 since that bass hits right from the start. And also that deep synth note when it's that close up of the eyeball opening, it sustains for so long giving any speakers a workout. I also watched the first battle scene from Hacksaw Ridge which is just in your face insanity. To start, I did take note of the noise floor. So after opening up my DB Meter Pro app on my phone and placing it right next to the tweeter, you can see the slightly audible hiss brought up the noise floor to about 42 decibels on the A-weighted scale. But if I just get a reading of the room tone in this testing theater, it's already showing about 31 decibels. So in the grand scheme of things, showing a reading of 42 decibels is still not that loud at all. And we all know that nobody is going to listen to a movie with their ear pressed up against a tweeter because that slight little hiss is unnoticeable when seated in my listening position. Right off the bat though, when setting up the levels in the system, I noticed that I had to turn up the trim levels for each speaker just a hair compared to having my Outlaw Model 7000X connected. It ended up being about three decibels more for each speaker when all was said and done. But that's to be expected when dealing with the more efficient Class D amp topography. That isn't to say the Fiera sounded bad. 
quite the contrary. Since I was so used to the Model 7000X, I was presented with a warmer, more neutral tone from the Fiera that just seemed a tad more accurate to the original source material. I can't find a graph online showing this to be true, but with my ears, it seems like the frequency response of the Outlaw Model 7000X is an inverted bell curve, where the lows and highs are just slightly boosted because I get a little bit more bass and a little bit more sizzle in the highs. But that might be fatiguing after a while to some of you out there. So I do appreciate the more neutral response that the Fiera brings to the table. I also listened to music while testing out the Fiera 8. I listened to several genres from face melting metal like Ice Nine Kills, alternative metal like System of Down, some classic hip hop like Wu Tang Clan and Beastie Boys, threw some Lil Nas X in there to test a more modern bass response, listened to the boss himself, Bruce Springsteen, and capped it off with some classical music like Fantasia on a theme by Thomas Tallis, which is featured a couple times in Master and Commander. Now you know that tidbit for your next trivia night. But this is where the differences were weren't as noticeable. I still think the bass response was a bit punchier with the 7000X, especially with Industry Baby, and Lil Nas X's vocals had a sizzle to them that wasn't as apparent with the Fiera. But again, I know there are some of you out there who prefer warmer, less brilliant sounding mids and highs that the Fiera reproduces. Since we're only dealing with two channels when music is involved though, both performed very well overall with music. They pushed my Theatris T80s very well with no distortion even at louder volumes. Hi-hats and cymbals did have a little more sheen to them with the 7000X, but again, some might find that annoying after long listening periods. But both made it seem like there was some good dimensionality to the overall sound. It didn't seem like either made it sound like music was too forward or flat. The music sat nicely between the two speakers with vocals hitting that phantom center dead on. Recap. So why eight channels? Well, there was more flexibility with eight channels, my friends. If you have a 7.x.4 configuration, for example, you could power all of your ear level speakers with the Fiera 8 without maxing out its power capacity. But what if you have a monster front soundstage with its own external amp already? Well, then you could power your surrounds, surround backs, and all four heights with the Fiera 8. That's something you couldn't pull off with your typical seven channel external amp. You could also bi amp your front left and right speakers while powering your four heights or whatever. So many possibilities with eight channels to work with. So if you like a warmer, more neutral, more efficient amp, the Fiera 8 should be on your radar for sure. If weight and size is an issue in your setup, the lighter class D Fiera 8 with its smaller footprint should be the way to go. I know it's a little more to spend than its competitors, but I've seen it dip down close to $1,000 during certain sales throughout the year. So be on the lookout for that. And there you have it. Thank you for joining me on this review of the Fiera 8 external amp from Stark Sound. Is eight channels a little more flexible for your home theater needs? How would you integrate a Fiera 8 into your system? Let's start a conversation, people. As always, please be kind to each other out there. Don't just watch TV and movies with a Fiera 8 powering your speakers, experience them. And of course, always be listening.